Okay, hello. Uh, I'm going to show you how to find do some inverse normal problems on the Casio graphics calculator here. Uh, so I'll put a couple problems down and show you how to do a little bit of work on paper first and then how to get it on this. All right, so turn it on, get it ready, and I'll show you what to do. All right, before we begin, I just want to say that I always like to draw a picture of the standard normal curve before we get on the calculator, so we'll do that as well. Let's look at this. So X, I couldn't make up. I just made up this problem, so that's why I just called it X. It could be height of pine trees, height of students, weights of turtles, whatever. I'm saying it's normally distributed with a mean of 17 millimeters and a standard deviation of 1.5. Find the length, and that's what we're doing with inverse normal. We're given the probability, and we're finding what the actual measurement is. Find the length exceeded by 15%. All right, so the first thing I do is I just draw a picture of this, of my normal curve. If it's normally distributed, it's going to look like that. Uh, so our normal curve, not standard normal. Did I say standard normal? We're not going to set the mean to zero just yet. Uh, the mean is 17, and the length exceeded by 15%. Well, the length exceeded by 15% is going to be that, I don't know where it is, right there, that top 15% right there. All right, so I shaded in that top 15% as a decimal at 0 0.5, and on the graphics, it's going to be classified as the area because the area under the curve is the probability. So let's get our let's get our stats here first. Our mean, our mean is 17, and our standard deviation is 1.5. Okay. Now, before I get the calculator, that value right there is what I'm trying to figure out. That's going to represent what, what is that actual measurement, where 15% of the data exceed it. Now, we'll show you how to do it on here. Do I have everything? I think so. So I'm picking this up, and I'm going to go over to Stats, and I press Execute. And now I'm going to go over to Distribution, so I press F5. And now I'm going to go to normal, so I press F1, and I want inverse normal right there. Click F3. Now here, I want my data to say variable. The tail, if it has a tail, which this one does, we want to enter that in. That one's tail right because it's right of the mean, and it's tailing that way to the right. So I scroll down to there, and I want right tail. My area represents the probability. Zero, where is it? 0 0.15. 0 0.15. Execute. That is my standard deviation, which is 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 Execute. And my mean was 17. 1, 7. Okay. Now I press Execute. Press execute again, and what I get is the value that represents the actual measurement. Okay, which is to two decimal places, I get 18.55. All right, so that's one that's tail right, and of course it could be tail left, and it could be central as well, like the central 30% or the interquartile range would be the central 50%. So I'll do another example. All right, let's try this one now. We've got 55% are below what length? Probably should be a question mark there. And first we'll draw a pretty picture. There's our normal curve. Our mean, I'll use the same mean, 17. Now, 55%, that's going to be more than half the curve, and it's below. So it's going to be a tail left, but it's more than 50%, which means it's going to be somewhere over here where my x is. And it's going to be that side shaded, the left side. That looks nice. So we've got a mean of 17, same. Standard deviation of 1.5. Tail left. And the area is 0 0.55. All right, right there. Sorry about that. So we just put that in, and 
Everything's the same except for that. Tail left. Uh, the area is not 0 0.15, it's 0 0.55. Standard deviation is the same, mean is the same, press execute, and we get our value right here. And we can just make sure if it's above the mean that it's more than 17, which it is, just. Okay, so that's how we do some inverse normal on here. And that's just about it. We could, I didn't do any examples of when we have... Uh, center one, like the interquartile range, but I can do that in another video. Okay, thanks for watching.